Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editorial Director of Low Power High Performance Engineering. I'm here with Richard Trehe from Global Foundries, Chi Wang from Cadence, Venki Venkatesh from Atrenta, and Leah Clark from Broadcom. Richard, what do you see as some of the major techniques that are coming out to solve power going forward, and how effective will they be? Well, at the FAB um, Global Foundries, we continue to look at uh, all power performance area enhancements um, in the design flows in our technology. But coming soon, um, we, we currently have 20 nanometer technology in, in production. Um, and coming very soon behind that in, in 14 is, uh, is uh, FinFETs, um, a, a process we call finification, where you can take the largely the design you did for 20 nanometer, replace the uh, planar transistor with FinFETs, and see 40 to 60 percent reduction in power. Um, so these kinds of um, process enhancements will go a long way to improving the, the, the uh, power efficiency. Leah, from Broadcom's perspective, what do you see as the most important tools for reducing power and containing it, and how effective are they at this point? So right now I feel like we have a lot of point tools that allow you to reduce, reduce power at various points along the design process, but what we're missing is some unifying layer that brings all of those different tools together and brings feedback back to the system designers to allow them to understand how their efforts are producing good results in the end. I feel like we're missing a unifying factor to bring the power reduction back to the system level designer and help them understand what actually got implemented to verify that it was the intent and to bring everything together to the final result of a good low power design. To some extent, what you're talking about is the differences between UPF, CPF, and the various different versions even of UPF, right? Some of that is true. Um, also, I think that UPF and CPF are very detailed languages, and they're not necessarily human readable at all levels of engineering, and they shouldn't be. But we need some way to be able to translate a human readable power intent into this machine readable power intent and verify that they're equivalent. Chi, what do you see as some of the major techniques that are coming out to solve some of the power issues going forward, and how effective will they be? Yeah, there's many different angles. Um, easiest one is to look at the process, uh, but from uh, EDA tool vendors, we'll be focusing on two areas. One area is the circuit design technique. The other is the uh, new EDA tools to enable the design technique and even further reduce the power. How but, effective is it going to be, though? Yeah. Uh, it could be, uh, the impact could be very significant. For example, on the circuit design side, uh, people are looking into the ultra low voltage circuit uh, technologies, can you know, turn the voltage to a very low level and still make uh, the performance meet the requirement. Uh, we all know that uh, VDD, the dynamic power is to VDD square, so you get 10% of VDD reduction, you get 20% dynamic power savings. Some other circuit uh, techniques, including uh, special low power cell designs to enable um, uh, lower power consumption. Uh, one good example is uh, double edge trigger flip flop. Uh, you can uh, leverage both the rising and the falling edge of the flip flop uh, so that you can reduce the clock frequency through uh, frequency by half, uh, still maintain the throughput, and that will save uh, uh, dynamic power quite significantly. Becky, from your perspective, what are some of the major techniques that we're going to see going forward and how it, in, to solve power and how effective will they be? The biggest technique to save power is to actually completely shut down parts of the circuit. So that we already know. We'll continue to do more of that. We'll also be continue to reduce activity whenever necessary. So these are known techniques, but it has to be applied widely. I see at least three different ways in which uh, we'll lower power over time. First of all, uh, we need to be able to measure power accurately at the various design stages, such as the algorithmic level, the architectural level, the RTL level, the gate level. We must be able to measure power. We must be able to do trade-offs of power versus performance at each of these levels so that people can make good decisions all the way down. So that's, I, that's in terms of the whole methodology to solve power. I also see uh, great improvements coming in terms of circuitry. There will be set sub-threshold circuits. Uh, there will be new ways to have memories created. All these will consume a lot lower power than what they do right now. And going forward, I even think uh, 
energy harvesting may be possible uh, simply by uh, differences in temperature and pressure, say in your body, you can even uh, scavenge energy, just, just like regenerate your braking, et cetera. And uh, work along these lines is being done in MIT and other colleges. So I think it, that also has a big future. Thank you.